I, I don't, I... Hi, um, my name's Lindsay. I'm an industrial designer. I've been working professionally for about six years. This is the seven questions challenge. Um, I was asked to do this by uh, Morna and I'm really excited to kind of be included in the conversation. Uh, so I'm just gonna get started. Um, so number one is industrial design is a fairly uncommon field. How did you discover it? Um, I initially went to school for architecture. I was um, I was interested in math and science. I knew I didn't want to do engineering, but I hadn't really taken art classes in high school. The way our school was set up, I was able to kind of fulfill my art requirement by being a part of the music program. And so by the time I got to like choosing a major, I was very lost and just kind of landed on architecture because I liked to draw. Um, and while in school, I realized I just didn't want to be drawing stairs in other people's buildings for my entire career and I was able to speak with my advisor who was really helpful. Um, at the time I was really looking at the dye line a lot and I showed him the dye line and I was like this is really cool I really like this and he was like well that's a whole job like you can do that. So that's when I got introduced to industrial design. I started to um, look at different programs. My sister was going to Northeastern at the time and so I chose Wentworth because it was right across the street um, and now we're here. Question number two is how do you explain your job to those who don't know about ID? Um, I think partially because I started out in architecture I more often get the like oh so you design factories uh, and no. <laughs> So the way I usually explain it is by referencing kind of everyday objects, like people I think m marginally know that like Apple designs their products, they may not know what that entails. Um, so I'll reference like your phone, your car, your chairs, like a lot of items, most items in your everyday life, a, an industrial designer has had a hand in making them. And I talk about how like that's the end result, what you have in your hand, but in order to get there we do research, we do testing, we do, you know, like ergonomic evaluations, and then it becomes a product, um, and it's kind of my job to do that and then also make it nice. Um, and that's, that's, I usually, I don't ever really have to expand on that, but that's how I usually put it. Question number three is what inspirations have developed your ID style? So I think that I started out my career doing toys at Hasbro and because I didn't have a background where I knew what industrial design was and I kind of only started really drawing in college, I think my style is a little different from the traditional ID style and that's largely influenced by the people who I used to work with. Um, a uh, friend of mine, Matt Brown, whose style I find like incredibly inspirational, who taught me like a way that I still use of uh, rendering in Photoshop. Um, you know, he had me start watching things like Apple CDX Machina uh, when we were doing more like Transformer type toys, and um, I already watched like a ton of anime. I already play a ton of video games, and those kind of like like weird creatures or mechanical styles, like I always loved incorporating them in some ways into my designs. Um, and beyond that, I really take other inspiration from like textile designers like Doosan and Doosan, who just make like great playful patterns, and um, like Creature Box, who does these awesome character designs and they really push the boundaries of proportion. And I really like to take those things and kind of meld them into my design style and I know they're not like traditional ID avenues but I think like I enjoy products that have a little bit of play to them so I'm okay with melding that into what is still like my overall minimalist style um, but yeah it's, it's just like a, a mess of things have influenced my ID style. Question number four is what company would you love to design a product for? So I've ping-ponged a lot in my career. I, coming out of school, I had a idea of what success in industrial design meant or how I was supposed to have my career go. And um, because of that, I, I kind of fought pretty hard to get to work at a consultancy. And um, I since kind of like reformed the way that I think about work in general, and that's a whole different story. But um, I think I've finally landed on the fact that like when I think about what I really love to do, 
I love to be in the outdoors and what I'd want to do is make that space more accessible to people. Um, I grew up in a log cabin in the woods. We had like orienteering, we, uh, we took like a class on how to hike properly, how to follow trail signs and all that when uh, we had moved to this house when I was a kid and um, you know all of those things made the outdoors accessible to me but I think outdoor play is first of all like really important in developmental cycles but it's also just important for us in general. I think more and more people feel like they want to unwind um, but also feel intimidated by outdoors and um, so oddly I, I, it's not like it's not like flashy but I'd really like to work for REI um, and design products for them first of all because any instance where I can say that I have to go to Mount Rainier for research is one I'm going to try and take up um, but also because REI specifically as a company they have just like a, a moral um, ethos to their company that I really identify with that I would want to have if I had my own company um, and so I'd really like the opportunity to work with them uh, so question number five is what is your go-to ID program and why? Um, for me it's, I mean, first of all I, I'm a recent convert to Procreate as a sketching software and I, you know, recently got an iPad and I'm still like just adjusting to that and it's really great, um, just such a useful tool but I think mainly what I use is a combination of SolidWorks and KeyShot. Um, a couple of years ago KeyShot put out this webinar on um, iterative design with like the KeyShot plugin into SolidWorks and that really changed my workflow. At the time I was working at a consultancy where you know I had to like consistently churn out uh, different types of variations on like one idea and it was that like sort of close process between those two programs that allowed me to really explore better and I think one of the most powerful things is like I think sketching is a way that designers talk to each other but um, a lot of the time we have to talk to people who don't see 3D when they're looking at 2D sketches and it's really valuable to have 3D earlier on for clients, for upper management, for sales teams or marketing who don't have design minds, who won't see a 2D sketch and say like, okay, I can complete the rest of this in my head. Um, it's, it's not a matter of like, oh, your sketch should be better. It's only to a point where you could so easily do like a 3D PDF for a client. Um, I, f I find that like SolidWorks earlier in the process is so much more valuable and um, I kind of learned to put aside my discomfort with moving to CAD so quickly um, and really work in there more often. Question number six is what do you dislike the most about industrial design? Um, I mean there are the usual things where you get you know a client who picks like your least favorite design and you're like why did I even put that in the presentation um, but I think beyond that one of the things I've wrestled with the most in my career is the fact that I've never gotten to work on a diverse team um, I've never even gotten to work with another female industrial designer and I'm also a queer designer and that it does feel isolating um, and I think we lose a lot in general when we don't participate on diverse teams. Um, so when I think about my frustrations with industrial design, it kind of starts with our education process in which we we base all of that design education off the Bauhaus for the most part. My school did and I know other schools do. And the Bauhaus was a really homogenous voice. It came from one very specific type of person. and. Um, I think when I think about the things that inspire me, they aren't things that I think Dieter Rams would call unobtrusive. Um, I don't think anything about like Transformers that I used to get to draw is unobtrusive, but it doesn't mean it was bad design. And to that same point, like things that come from other cultures, things that aren't this uh, like minimalist only style, they're, they're not bad design. They don't fit within the Bauhaus ethos, but it, it doesn't mean much. And I think we lose a lot when we exclude those voices, when we exclude those design possibilities. Um, you know, and when I look at where even I get inspiration for products, I mean, I love Les Manouches. It's 
a wonderful site and Render Weekly is like cool, but a lot of the things that we tout as the designs that are the best, they're super cool, they are all the same singular type of design. And um, I think, especially now, that's not good enough. So the other part of that, and, and what's probably more important, is that when we talk about what makes a good design, we talk about how things have to, we design for like the most amount of people, where we ideally want to get from like 0 percentile to 100 percentile, or 5th to 95th. And we don't apply that same process or that same design ethos to our hiring processes, our research, the people who we listen to in research, and especially in like nurturing types of students. Um, I, I think that it's a huge miss for us to not work on teams where we have diverse voices. And um, I think it's, it's good now that we're having conversations around diversity and inclusivity in the workspace, but I also think that like essentially tomorrow if you wanted to start doing more research with more voices and, and more inclusive research, you could. And I think it's a matter of like these aren't really things that take time. We don't need necessarily advisory boards to tell us that we need diversity on our teams. We need to change the way that we're hiring. Um, change the way that we're listening to people and listening to voices and I hope that those types of changes are made quickly because essentially like the only thing that happens when we adjust our design processes to have diverse teams and listen to diverse voices is that we make better products for more people and that is why I do this job and I think that's why a lot of other people do this job or I hope so that's my very cheerful answer. And then question number seven is what makes an industrial design good? Um, I think that this is really subjective, it's going to be like just my opinion. Um, I think I can appreciate when designs are really cool, like I can look at an i-series and just be like, hell yeah, like car is super cool, but when I think about the core of what appeals to me in industrial design, it's more in like smaller everyday interactions. So I have already filmed this part and then rewatched it in absolute abject horror and so I decided to redo it, but I also grabbed the object I was talking about, which was the Alessi wine bottle opener that I have. Um, I also bought this for $8 in tag sale and it makes me happy every time I think about that. Um, but the reason why I like this product so much and the reason why I think it's good is that it's easier for me to open bottles of wine with this than a normal like corkscrew opener because of the way that I can leverage it because I can use two hands to push down on this to take a cork out I'm not like grinding through corks and then like somebody later on is like oh there's cork floating in my glass of wine and I have to pretend like it wasn't my fault um so I really like this for that, but I also like the fact that this is just kind of a joyful product. Um, you know, the action of opening the bottle of wine makes the little character do a dance. I believe that's like in the initial product description. And I really enjoy the fact that like that's really indicative of what's happening when I'm opening a bottle of wine in my house. It's usually like friends are over or family's over for a holiday or I'm celebrating something and I just really enjoy the fact that that same process or that same feeling is emoted during the opening process. Um, it's just something really sweet um, and it's something that changes what is usually a pretty banal process. It's just opening a bottle of wine. It's not like why we're all at my house, but it is just, I find that life is very strange and very short, and I like that there can be products that just make simple everyday things a little bit of a celebration. Um, and that's my very, like, rosy point of view on good design. <laughs> um, I hope that, like, I haven't rambled too much, and thank you again to Morna for uh, asking me to do this. I'm really excited to be part of the conversation and I will link all of the other people doing this video uh, below and that is everything. Bye! <laughs>